this is the beginning of sketchbook tour just finished another one uh, this one took me about a month and two weeks um, technically it's not finished because I got to do one final drawing in the back but I'm saving that for uh, later tonight I'm gonna record a little Star Wars drawing time-lapse uh, this is a self-portrait where I look a lot more I look a lot less white than I do in real life in this. I don't know how that happened, but kind of looks like me, kind of. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna flip this this way. Uh, this is um, some thumbnails for an illustration I have in mind for my warrior primate project. Um, the idea was have a bunch of chimpanzee like monkey recruits in boot camp. Chimpanzees are apes, I know. Ape recruits and then having like a, a orangutan, orang orangutan drill sergeant walking down the line and um, maybe the ones close to him are like sweating and nervous and then the further away from him as he walks down the line they're like breaking rank and you know making funny faces at him. This one's gonna be mooning him. I was just trying out some different compositional uh, elements. I think this is the one I chip, like landed on in the end. And it's got the check mark. Um, but I, I kind of went like this, actually. Um, and yeah, the, the goal was to have like kind of the punchline. I want the eyes to go through like the story and end on the punchline, which is like this ape's butt. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, started this uh, third and kind of guide the eye down to the lower right third intersection um, where the butt will be. So this is a little bit bigger than I think it would be, like it's filling the frame a little bit more. But if we shrink it down a little bit, it'll fit really well. Um, although, I think I'm going to make all of these illustrations uh, portrait instead of landscape. So... I might have to redo it. I mean, I, I could probably do the same elements, right? Like put the top, like it, it'll just like widen the scope a little bit, I think. Um, like maybe maybe we'll see more sky and more um, feet. But I could still keep everything the same, just widen it a little bit. So put the head still at the third. and But we'll see. I don't know. Um, I like this one, but... The uh, drill sergeant does not seem as imposing. Um, so I right here, like, use a low angle. But I don't know. We can still mess with it some more. This is, like, super early. Um, and then, in preparation for this, I was like, okay, let's get some orangutans. So here's some skeletons of the orangutan. Um, kind of doing the dynamic sketching process that I use now. Um... You know, start with like a really loose frame. Someone in an Instagram comment recently, I did this for like a cheetah, and someone said they liked how the uh, subframe build out looks like a constellation if you just took out the lines and put in the dots. I thought that was really fascinating. I'd never thought of it like that before. But anyways, and then uh, take that and refine it, do the same thing but fix the mistakes and add a little bit more detail um, and form. Orangutan skulls are really funny. It's almost like, even though it doesn't look like an orangutan, it's like you could guess that that's an orangutan. There's their heads, because they have these big flaps, these weird skin flaps. And I guess they actually, like, they inflate or something, and they use them to, like, yell louder. They act like a, like the hole in a guitar, basically. You have the whole body of the guitar resonating. That's, like, the purpose of their skin flaps. <laughs> absurd and then I did some paintings this feels so long ago I can't believe it was only a month and a half I think I posted a video on Instagram of um, me painting these I did it on Instagram live um, this is like a water-based markers with ink and a gel pen this is mostly just ink and markers and then this is kind of a hybrid of the two this one looks a lot more soft, right? But this one's a little bit more stark. I, I don't know, like I think I like this. If I was gonna make like stickers or something, I'd stick to that kind of style. But for more of a study 
based idea. Like that one's pretty good too. That's another one. Um, this reference was actually terrifying, and then it got even more terrifying when I drew it, just because it's such a haunting silhouette, kind of. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so end of that, orangutans. Um, then I did this, um, if y'all remember, I did that one warrior primates thing for the, um, the kamikaze snow monkey. So I sketched the plane that they were in. I didn't end up using it, really, but it still uh, made me a lot more familiar with the planes, so it helped with the narrative. And um, I also drew the cockpit, which was very useful because in the illustration I did, the camera is, like, right here pointing back at the pilot and so just having this as a reference of what would be around the pilot and knowing like what the cockpit looks like was super helpful so it wasn't all all for now it was, it was kind of useful in the end we got uh this was i did like a group sketching night on my twitch stream and we voted to do like this old charlie chaplin camera so same thing dynamic sketching kind of iterations to define refine and then finally like really take <clears throat> excuse me take it all the way with like a, a render um, the ellipses are a little rough but I kind of like how kooky it looks um, I like that they're all going a different direction and I don't know it's kind of fun and then I think that same night we had some other people come in towards the end so we did another one, and we did this old-school German boombox. Um, this was from the reference image that I found. It's really goofy. And then I think, yeah, I did some quick character uh, sketches. Not really character sketches. This is a photo of Fresh Prince, so I put the boombox on him. And that's a photo of Charlie Chaplin, of course, so I put the camera on his head. But I did merge them into one image, and I think it looks pretty nice. These are probably my favorite in the whole book. More of that uh, marker, ink, whiteout combo, paint pen. And uh, these guys are really funny. They're probably like one of my favorite favorite animals. Um, they just are have so much character and they are these super thick fur uh, monkeys that live in the snowy region of Japan. And they... Um, spend a lot of their day in these natural hot springs to stay warm and they're just so goofy they just look like they're having a great time in this sauna it's really funny this i started doing for another one of the warrior primates thing um we got it pretty far it's pretty good um i i'm pretty good at drawing shermans now i think from my memory because i've drawn I have a whole nother roll that I did in about the same time frame. It's probably about halfway done. That was all devoted to the warrior primates. And that one was, I, I probably drew like eight tanks on there at least. Um, so I've drawn them a lot now, but they're, they're deceptively hard. There's a lot of ellipses and wheels and things to keep track of, so. And these are also so large. You don't realize how big they are until you see someone standing next to them, but like a person's head doesn't even reach the top of this really. It's they're really big vehicles. Cuz if you think about it, there's like three dudes sitting in there. It's pretty cramped, but there's like three or four guys sitting in there sometimes. Um they're just massive vehicles. Just a bunch of ellipses. Uh more primates. These are in the illustration I'm working on. Uh, gonna pilot the tank, slow lorises. So same thing, got the constellation effect, <laughs> skeleton, and then a three-quarter view. Skull, a couple iterations, sort of a head study. These guys have really weird hands. I've actually drawn their hands quite a bit. Um, their index finger, quote-unquote, is really short, and they have kind of a longer than usual middle finger and a really long thumb. And I think that's to give them like an extra wide grip around something. Because even we have that, like this to this is a longer distance than to the index finger. Um, but 
the Loris takes it to another level and this is even like shrunk and out of the way. That's just how they evolved, I guess. So they can grab like huge branches and I think they can actually like fall asleep holding them. German tanks are easier to draw, Mr. Mao tells me. In my, I'm streaming this by the way. This is being recorded, but I'm also streaming at the moment. Yeah, the Sherman tank is like really, there's a lot of strange angles and like there's parts of it that like continue out flat, but they shrink in, like they round and then around them there's like a plane that goes down. So there's like this form intersection that's kind of tricky. Yeah, it's, it's weird. I, I'm gonna draw some German tanks eventually. Tiger tank for sure. Uh, these were, I thought I was going to do that, um, the Kamikaze Snow Monkey illustration from like this angle. I ended up doing something totally different, but it was still a good study. So I took this image and I made it really high contrast to do like a, vo a value study. I took out the uh, saturation and then made it really high contrast so I have a nice reference. And then I put the color back in and like ultra saturated it. So I got all of these like, I guess you'd call them like core colors. And I didn't want to do like any blending or anything. I just wanted to do like big fat shapes of what was in there. Um, and uh, then I would know what I had to desaturate to get the, I, it was just an interesting like kind of backwards color study. Um, again, I didn't end up using it, but this did inform my choices a lot when I was, um, painting the uh, illustration in the end. So here's the thumbnails for it. Working at this size, these each take about 30 seconds. So um, maybe a little more. But we just slowly refined it, tried to find some good rhythms and values. And then on the next page, I did some color. Oh no, this is just like a character study. I might make a sticker or something out of that. I like it a lot. But on this page, I did some some color studies. Hi, hi cat. What's up, dude? Do you want to come sit next to me? So this was just kind of to decide, like, what's going to be dark, what's going to be light, what uh, shade and hue do I want to use? How light do I want the face to be to make it pop out of the dark background? Do I want the you know background and the sky to be dark or light? In the end, I went with like an orange sunset, um, very apocalyptic sky behind him, and then a really cool interior like this purple, and then um, like a darkish green tan color for the character. And you can see that. Um, illustration on my Instagram or I have it on Patreon too and one of my blog posts which are free so uh, this is really fun I really like drawing these um, gibbons are crazy they're really loud they scream really loud um, but they're also just like they're big like an ape but they swing around like a monkey they have super long arms super long legs and um, they, they kind of look like uh, like trapeze artists, the way they swing back and forth and gain momentum before they fly off onto another branch. They're really funny. And they also walk around on two two legs. So they're, they're really silly. There's a video of that on Instagram too, me drawing those. Here's a bunch more. These are um, like the darker colored ones, Hulot Gibbons. They have really funny eyebrows, sometimes um, sideburns. Very expressive because of that. I did this with like a purple ink and um, it was like watered down. And so as the brush kind of ran out of uh, water, it started to shade. So you get a lot of really interesting different values and it actually color, sh like shifts color a little bit as it dries out. Makes for like really natural looking monochrome paintings like you can see it here it's almost brownish near the edge and then it turns into kind of a plum on the inside yeah it's a good
contrast. It's like a, or up here you can really see it, look at that. I think it's called um, Purple Mountain Majesties from Noodler's Inc, but I mixed it with something, I don't remember what. There's the skull of a gibbon, not too unlike our skull, I'll point out, but you know, their muzzle comes out a lot more and they have those huge teeth. Um, this was like a, it was on a pink epoxy stream on Twitch and she does like drawing, draw long days. And I always like to just, it's like a 15 minute timer to draw the same reference as a bunch of other people. And, um, I always like to mess around when I'm like timed like that with a bunch of different mediums and just try to come up with something cool. Because I think the time crunch like forces me to experiment a lot. So if I was going to like do this again differently, I'd probably add some of this smeared blue under the nose there. It would look really nice. Um, and maybe on the underside of the chin here or the jaw. But all in all, it's, it reads really quickly and it's like kind of interesting. Kind of reminds me of Roy Batty actually from Blade Runner. Here's another uh, community sketching night on Twitch. We did the shoe bill. Very strange animal. It is like a, a dinosaur that lives in Africa, basically. Huge, um, sem I don't think it's a stork, but it's sort of like a stork. And I did a lot of iterations on this one before I felt good with it. And then I ruined the drawings at the end with a new highlight that was just way too stark. It really pops off. <laughs> You'll see it when I flip that page, but. Here it is. So you can see it's not like a, a hushed highlight at all. It's just totally d takes your attention away from the animal. But still a very fun creature. They have very menacing eyes. They always look like angry, like they're gonna attack you. Um, and they look like Skeksis from the Dark Crystal, too. They have that big dinosaur head beak kind of thing with the really sharp tip. Pretty cool. Uh, we got the Slow Loris. I did this... Um, I was really into color for like a week. I kind of fell off of that pretty fast. But I was using um, all these uh, all these different markers, water-based, and then I would kind of diffuse them with water and get them to uh, like smear and desaturate, um, and then ink as well for the really dark areas. And I, it's like a pretty nice effect, and I can bust these out really fast because um, it dries so quickly compared to paint. So they're pretty fun. It's it's sort of like painting, but it's um, a lot more like mark making. Still need like some line quality and I don't know, it's fun. It feels like sketching still, but it's kind of painting. Same night I did this, which is a lot more sensitive. Um, he looks extra orange on the camera, like Dorito colored, but in real life he's a little bit more desaturated, but still a little orange. Um, but in my defense, the reference image was very orange, so warm light, I guess, does that. This is some famous tank commander who won an award and it got sold by a collector after he died. I don't know. Uh, here are some lemurs in uh, Nazi regalia. Uh, that was another idea for that. Warrior Primates Project. It's a drawing of a car that I quite like. Very nice. For everyone just popping in on the Twitch stream, hello, we're doing a sketchbook tour and I'm recording it. And I'm gonna have to throw it up on my Patreon or my uh, YouTube or both. So, sorry if I'm not super active with chat, but you know. I felt pretty good with this one. Um, it felt a little rusty, but it felt pretty good. And then 
I did another car the next week and I felt so rusty. I didn't understand. I was like, I just did this last week. Like the highlight here is a little rough, but besides that, like it looks pretty good. The information is good, but I felt extremely rusty afterwards. Here's another Instagram live drawing I did. This thing is like so much uh, medium on the page and it doesn't bleed at all. That's awesome. That's why I love this paper. That was, uh, I think that was on Alien Day, whatever. This, someone asked me to draw a samurai uh, mask in Oyoroi pronunciation. Um, from memory. So that was that, and then I just kind of fudged the perspective really bad. So then I found a, a reference and did it again. Not too bad, though. Um, they really have much more of a snarl, though. I gotta remember, it looks like the Green Goblin mask. Like the Willem Dafoe Green Goblin mask. Uh, this was another community sketch night. This is basically a lobster. I've done a lobster pretty recently in the same method, and it is so similar to a lobster. But what I really like about scorpions is the way their claws lock together. There's like a really nice mechanical um, design to them, and everything is shaped in a way that it can kind of close up and um, not bump into itself when it's like moving its arms, which, you know, all creatures have, but it's like really obvious in the, the shape design. Oops. And then here's my final, final drawing, very shiny. This is like the common evil kill you if you're not careful, scorpion. And I'm sure most people have seen. It's like black, very shiny. It's creepy little eyes. This did really good on Instagram for some reason. Most of my posts lately have been pretty low in the like department, but this one really popped off. People like scorpions. Uh, this was a study of those gibbon hands. Look at how crazy long they are. They look like feet. I think after I drew this, I went through um, and did a bunch of research on different primate hands to see how they varied. And um, for sure, the lorises have the weirdest, weirdest hands. But gibbons, it's just like a big foot. It's so weird. A big foot, but its thumb is still down here. And it lets them, like, they have, like, a really long wrap around. Like, you'd think they just have longer feet, but, or longer fingers, but no, they have just this massive, massive grip. Uh, first week of my anatomy course, I drew a bunch of feet, and he hated them. In his defense, they're not that great, but that's why I'm taking the course. But I didn't know that he wanted like a really traditional rendered graphite soft form. And I'm used to doing a bunch of drawings in ink all the time for other classes. So I tried to, you know, I tried to put them in and do it, but he just really did not like it. So it's a lot of drawings of feet in here um, from different artists. And... Um, I like them. I, I wouldn't be mad if I drew feet like this from memory, you know, but I did not get good good feedback on these. I didn't really get good feedback, period, but the feedback that I was given was that they were bad, so. Oh well. Um, I guess there's technically already a Star Wars drawing in here. But we're going to do another one in the end. I don't know why I drew this. It's like a, a Sith Lord Ewok. It's funny, at least. 
I, I experimented a little bit with like the glow effects. I was sitting on the couch next to my cat and I drew him a bunch with a brush pen. Cats like, unless they're asleep, they like to turn the angle of their head a lot. So I, you know, did a bunch of them and then I would, I'd get like halfway and then he would change direction. So I'd, oh, speak of the devil. He changed direction, so I'd start another one, and then I get halfway, and he changed back to this direction, so I'd go back and start finishing this one, and then he changed again, so I'd start this one, and then he changed back to this one, so I'd finish it. So, in the end, we got like five, five loose ink Torbjorn drawings. There's some more feet. These were from reference. Um, I was just like, er, duh, from reference, but, um from life. I was, this is the same day I was sitting on the couch with my feet out in front of me. So I drew them and um, tried to keep in mind all of the different um, things I had learned about feet. So, you know, all the tendons and I was trying to like just look at my foot, analyze it, label everything and, you know, they're not great drawings, but they're fine. Uh, here, same same day, same, just sitting on my couch, uh, I drew a bunch of gorilla heads from memory. In my last sketchbook, I drew like 40 gorillas, so I'm pretty comfortable with them now, but you know, I gotta keep flexing that muscle. I'm still confused with a lot of apes on how to draw the jaw. That's really tricky. Another drawing of the cat who has just curled up next to me as we speak. Um, this was another sketch night. We voted on like a military utility vehicle and we ended up drawing a Jeep train, which they basically uh, put train wheels on a Jeep and then rode it around on train tracks. And they could also like couple up multiple. So it was like equivalent to a, like a steam engine. Um, Really struggled with it though because I've drawn the same Jeep before with regular tires on it, which are way bigger. Um, but just drawing it again with a different scale of measurement because I use the wheels to measure, and so when the wheels are way smaller, it like threw off all my measurements. And you know, drawing these train wheels is just like a bunch of concentric ellipses, which I'm terrible at. This tire is way too big. It was just a kind of kind of goofy, but you know, that's okay. That's why we do it. It doesn't look that bad. Here is week two of my anatomy course. I, can, I can't show that since I'm streaming on Twitch, but I'm not afraid of it. Um, very shiny. I promise it's not that shiny in real life. For some reason, cameras just make this highlight come way out. I think it's just because the contrast up is kind of high. But um, they look extra shiny. But I, I had a good time drawing these. Um, I don't usually draw like this, so it's kind of like a nice um, change of pace to go in and draw with graphite and really render everything out. And this is what my anatomy professor wanted for the feet. I just didn't know. So now we do like one of these a week, and that's about it for me. Uh, I tried to draw a motorcycle. It didn't go very well. I don't know why I dropped that and never came back to it, but there's another cursed self-portrait and just, you know, no ref or no, no pencil. So I just kind of went in and if you mess up the eyes and you're doing a no pencil drawing, <clears throat> there's not really any, any saving it. So that's okay. Uh, these two pages, I carved a new stamp, this one, and I was testing it and I couldn't get it to work with, um, my ink pad. I have like a rubber stamp which works on my stamp pad, but for some reason that same stamp pad doesn't work on the lino block. It must just be the surface is not as, doesn't hold the ink as well or something. So if anybody has any tips, I don't want to have to roll out. This is actually the oil, so it's still wet. It's like oil print, printmaking ink. Um, but I'd rather not do that every time I use this stamp because it takes forever to dry. So if anybody has any tips on what I could do instead with the lino block, that would be awesome because the goal with this was to be able to stamp it on everything I send.
but I can't do that if it takes you know weeks to dry completely. Uh, some more boxes on here practicing like high fisheye lens boxes. Um, here's the car that I drew a week later that I mentioned. Um, struggle with this one a lot. I just kept falling off the page and I mean that's okay. Um, it's weird because when I look at this without the reference in front of me, it doesn't bother me as much. But when I have the reference in front of me, I'm like, no, this looks totally wrong. But it still looks like the car from that era. So it works. I kind of squashed it here, though. Whoosh. Um, Nothing on that page, but here's another anatomy. Don't worry about that twitch. That's uh, it's not what you think it is. Don't ban me. I, I, things got a little funky up here, but that's okay. The goal this week was not that. The goal was the torso, so draw some big abs. And again, it looks way shinier than it actually is. Uh, someone asked me to draw Pickle Rick with no reference. That was a little little goofy. And then I found a reference and understood the art style. As soon as you put those eyes in, it looks like Rick and Morty, so... That's a little curse, though. Chimpanzee study, very similar to the orangutan study. Um, they have a very different skull, though. Some drawings. Multiple iterations. I really enjoyed these ink drawings. Really fun. And these ones, too. These are um, simplified, like no reference, with just a brush pen. I'm trying to keep it blocky. And then these are like the opposite, where I have to draw like a jillion lines. But it looks really hairy and scruffy, so it worked out. There's another one. Again, like it looks so shiny, the highlight. It's like crazy on the camera, but I promise in real life it's way more subdued. <laughs> it's a couple feet, feet studies there. Uh, the back, back muscles, did those a couple days ago. Uh, and then cheetah is like the last thing in here. I really like how the head studies turned out. Skull looks pretty great. And then I tried to draw this pose and I struggle with it so much I'm actually gonna ask ask for some feedback on this. Couldn't get the head right, finally did. Couldn't get the body right, finally sorta of did. But the just whatever's going on back here is uh it's just a little goofy, but it's okay. And then we have this final page, which we're going to do a Star Wars drawing on. So, um, I think I will uh, end the recording here. I might edit this a little bit and put it on YouTube so it's not like 30 minutes long. But that's all. Stopping recording. <laughs>